Hey guys, welcome back to another action figure review. We're back with the new Mythic Legion series, the Poxes Wave, and up for review today is the Lich God himself, Poxes. In a much larger deluxe box, we can see Poxes here with all of his included accessories. On the back, we have the full artwork of the Poxes Wave showcasing the other four horsemen, a small paragraph of lore, and the pictures of other characters of this wave. A small picture of Poxes and lore can be read on the side of the box as well. Poxes shares the same type of box with Deluxe Legion Builders, with an added tray in the back for the wings and other accessories tightly packed into the plastic. Just like all other Mythic Legion boxes, we require no cutting to get anything out. As the Greater Demons work together to return their masters back into the Mortal Realm, Poxes was reunited back with his legendary bow, the Plague Sayer, and an unknown powerful talisman said to have the power to free Poxes from his internal imprisonment. These two items were returned to Poxes by the demon twins Azhar and Zazhar, in hopes of recombining themselves together, forming the demon king Azahazar, who has the power to create life and destroy it with a single touch. The lich god Poxes now travels the world of Mythos spreading disease and rot, firing off magical diseased insects with every shot of his Plague Sayer bow, with the intention of bringing the realm to ruin. While the Circle of Poxes might not command great armies like the other horsemen, they do make up for the lack of soldiers by wielding powerful magic users, including witches, demons, and sorcerers and other users of dark magic. Let's check out some of the details. Cracked bubbling green skin covers the frail skull-like face of Poxes. Exposed teeth, a lack of facial features, and a blank stare gives us the appearance of an undead head that's been rotting for a long time. Large insect style claws grow out of the top of the head in many sizes, while underneath we have a long flowing grey beard. The black insect legs have a shiny gloss finish to them and surround the head forming a morbid looking crown. Continuing onto the beard, it's sculpted in many waves of hair strands, both unkempt and dirty in appearance. With the beard ending in a decorative jewelry wrapping the end strands together. On this side we have a better look at the bubbly skin texture and some more details like the small ear and the heavy green wash giving the details a dirty grime effect. The other side has similar details with more small insect spikes coming out of the head at different stages of growth. We can see the spine sticking out of the skin on the back of the neck with a few more details on the back of the head like wrinkles and the small hole. A small metal collar wraps around the chest and shoulders detailed with silver rivets and stains in the metal. Small straps of leather are layered over each other in a pattern, each with its own bronze stud at the center. A heavy black wash covers the entire chest, giving it a dirty appearance. Just like most Mythic Legion figures, the back is mostly bare due to being covered up with accessories. Although the leather here is surprisingly detailed with small wrinkles in the sculpt and a bit of layering towards the bottom. The green frail shoulders here are covered in saggy wrinkled skin with many folds and blemishes in the skin. We do have a bit of muscle tone in the otherwise skinny arms. A decorated armored silver gauntlet is worn on the arms, stained with even more grime and dirt. Open palmed hands are sculpted with more wrinkles and black claw like nails. A small brown pouch is attached to the leather belt sitting on top of the armored plates. More insect legs extend out of the body at the waist, while underneath all the armor we have sections of ragged cloth. A tan and brown burlap cloth are worn underneath the armor, reaching all the way down to the legs. Every bit of cloth is torn and tattered, keeping with the decayed theme of the figure. More pouches are seen on the side of the belt along with those long insect legs. Underneath we have another plate of armor in a fin-like design with more cloth rags underneath. While on the other side we have more interesting accessories. A small bag with more insect spikes ripping through the small pouch and two small potion vials. A large bronze buckle is located on the back of the belt with the disfigured face as the design. This area is completely covered by the torn burlap rags with a few holes detailing the cloth. We have the standard 1.0 style knight armor used for the legs on Poxes. Disappointingly not a lot of going on here as it just has the tiniest bit of grime applied here and not much else. Moving down to the legs we can start to see a bit more grime painted on but nowhere near the rest of the figure. And with the standard night legs, nothing new is going on here. We wrap up the details with the boots of the figure. Silver armor, stained with that dirty looking grime, with rivets here that are painted silver. Let's check out the articulation. Poxes, 
has a big beard. A very large beard, one that's going to block a lot of the range of the figure. Although the head was designed to look forward with the beard lifted a bit, so you can still get a bit of rotation out of it. And just like the skeletons, we have no bicep rotation on this body. But the shoulders do lift up and rotate all the way around. We have elbows that bend inward and rotate. More rotation at the forearms. And the default installed wrists that rotate and bend up and down. While we do have full articulation at the waist, the sheer amount of armor this waist is going to block most of the bending. We have a plastic layer of the belt and then the armor and then cloth, keeping this area very tight. Leg articulation is going to be blocked by all those belt layers as well. With only the forward direction having any range, as you wouldn't want to stretch the cloth on any other. We do have thighs that rotate, knees that bend back and rotate, ankles that bend up and down and rotate, and the foot that twist. While Poxes is a god, we're still in the standard size format for Mythic Legions, as they are all interchangeable with the same body types, no one character is going to be larger than the other. Even Elithia, another god, being of similar height. For fun, I'll bring out the Cosmic Legions, another series by Four Horsemen Studios just to show that the scale is very similar between all of the figures. Next to Hasbro's 6 inch figures, we can see that Mythic Legions are just a bit taller and bulkier than what you'll normally see in stores. Next to Jada toys that run on the smaller size of the 6 inch scale, we can see how larger Mythic Legions really are compared to mostly everyone else. And everyone's favorite scale, McFarlane, that usually doesn't fit in with anything else, but their human size figures do do decently well with Mythic Legions. Unless you start to bring out the larger figures. As a deluxe figure, we get a pair of wings, detailed very well in a transparent effect with a scope that really lets the light reflect off of the bumpy texture. Both insect wings have a small joint at the tip that allows the wings to open, close, and rotate. The wings are attached to a special back adapter that uses the large rectangle peg in the back. Included in this adapter is a slot for the aura accessory. We have a clear yellow aura effect made of a hard brittle plastic decorated in a symmetrical design. The aura clips into the back attachment and can only fit while in the diamond position. Afterwards, you can then socket the adapter into the rectangle peg on the back of the body. This gives the aura a floating appearance on the back of the figure. While installing the wings, I do recommend heating up the adapter so that the sockets can loosen up and make it much easier to peg in the wings. The wings are made of a hard plastic, so you do want to take care in not using too much force, especially on the tiny joints. Surprisingly, the wings do not make the figure top heavy, unless you open up the wings in a weird position. After everything is installed and into position, the completed look of the effects really makes this figure stand out. We have a pair of shoulder armor, detailed with a very impressive chainmail effect, and a destroyed look to the armor. Installing the shoulder is very easy, you just match the peg with the socket on the back and plug them in. They can rotate up for a better shoulder articulation range. We have a few extra hands, starting off with the grabbing hand that rotates up and down. The exact same pair of grabbing hands with joints that move side to side. And a pair of grasping open palmed hands that bend side to side. Installing the hands is extremely simple. You can just pull off the default installed hands and pop in the new ones. We have a small burlap cloth collar made of the same material as the belt. Installing it is a lot like swapping out the head. You can pull it off of the socket, then slip in the cloth over the peg. Putting the head back on completes the look. While not an accessory, the pre-installed cloth does have metal wires built into the fabric, letting you pose it. We have two versions of the Plague Sayer bow. A normal version, fully detailed and painted with a stretchy bowstring. And an open winged version with transparent wing effects, but otherwise the same as the original. A single magic arrow effect, made of a brittle clear plastic, detailed with a fly insect at the tip. 
and a much larger magical arrow effect also made of clear brittle plastic. Its design is a cluster of magical flies splitting off of a single larger arrow. Getting a closer look at the tip, we can see the fine detail in the sculpting of this effect. A matching leather quiver, detailed with stitches, and arrows with yellow colored feathers. And we have a 2.0 style blue and gold dagger that unsheaths to reveal the dagger. Another amazing figure by Four Horsemen Studios. Poxis completely nails that look of a diseased god with many fine details that give the figure a sickly appearance. The unique head sculpt and clear wings and aura really pushed this figure into the centerpiece territory, making Poxis the perfect figure to build a legion around of. Four Horsemen Studios is getting really good at combining cloth and plastic together to form a unique style of look, while not overly relying on the cloth to make up for the entire figure's detail. I really do appreciate how just a few spots of cloth on the figure amplifies what's already there. As the series moves forward, we're seeing a lot of improvements still to come, with details in the sculpting really pushing what it means to be an action figure. Poxes is a finely crafted figure. Accessory-wise, it all revolves around parts and effects to make Poxis look great. Those large insect wings, clear yet detailed with textures and even transparent paint, and that aura effect really pushes Poxis into a unique combination of accessories that truly makes him stand out from the rest of the Mythic Legion characters. With the dagger and two bows with magical arrow effects, you have a few options to pose him with. Although I'm not sure why we have a bow without the effects, but it's a great option if you want to showcase an unpowered Poxis without the aura and wing effects. As for the arrow effects, while I have not run into any issues with them personally, they just feel way too fragile and brittle to use. While I do appreciate the quality of the plastic, I feel like a lower quality gummy plastic would at least let me use the arrows. Another small critique of the figure was the 1.0 style night legs. While I've been collecting Mythic Legions from the start, I am tired of seeing them used, especially on an iconic god figure like Poxis. And while that's not the biggest issue, they looked way too clean for the god of rot. Personally, I'll go back and apply some paint washes to grime them up myself because I don't know what Four Horsemen was thinking making them so clean looking. But I do have to say, he's one amazing looking figure. The head sculpt is just so creepy and fully equipped with all of his effects, he really makes an imposing character. Poxis is one of the most unique looking figures I have, especially in the undead rotting theme, you just don't ever see a character like this. I am a fan of the undead theme and characters, and Four Horsemen nailed the look and design of this figure. As time goes on, I always think that Four Horsemen have hit their peak, and then they announce a new wave with more features, crazier designs, and just way more value packed into each figure, with new accessories, cloth goods, they have been keeping me a fan for a very long time. Pre-orders for this figure ended a long time ago, but they're starting to hit online stores and afterwards an in-stock sale should be available on official sites. Poxes is definitely the god of plagues. Overall, he's an amazing sculpted figure with enough accessories to really make him the centerpiece of your collection. Definitely go and check him out. Alright guys, that's it for this review. Leave a comment letting me know how you like this figure, subscribe, or share this video with your friends to help out the channel.